Well, all right, here we are once again. I'm Pastor Bobby D. Hamilton. You see my face today, you know what day it is. It is Move Monday. Oh, yes, it is, and I've been moving. It has been a very uh, mobile day for me. I've been moving a whole lot today. It's been raining today, and I take my grandbaby to school today. A couple that I've been counseling are having a baby today, so they made their move to the hospital and say, Pastor, we're about to, this baby's about to come. Been a whole lot of moving going on. I've even I've got my run in. By the grace of God, I'm able to run and thank God for being able to run today. And that's not all. I'm standing in a place right now that has signage around that says, "Beware or look out for the alligators." Can you believe that? That there are alligators. So if you see an alligator while I'm here live, holler. And if I see an alligator, I'm gonna run. So. Both together, we're gonna to deal with these alligators. I'm in an alligator area right now. Wow, what am I thinking? What I'm thinking about is Move Monday and to encourage you guys to move. And for so many of you, he have been moved. You've been doing so many things. I've been here for, in fact, I started hearing from you on Sundays now about what you're gonna do on Mondays. And let me just encourage you for all that you've been doing on your Move Mondays, for your cycling, for your swimming, for your yoga, for, for you going back to your gymnasiums, for you starting your home gyms, for your in your garage gym. I heard from some of you are in your garages. You you set up a, a, a gym in your garage. You you put a flat screen on the wall. I heard from you. And what you're doing, your calisthenics and your stretching and, and just a myriad of things. So thank you for all that you're doing and how you're doing what you're doing. You caught the concept. And the concept is very simple. That God has given us these bodies. And as these bodies we have, no matter what condition they may be in, we have a responsibility to be a steward over our bodies. And part of being a steward of our bodies is to get out and move. So you You've been moving so i just thank you for your moving it's such an encouragement young old in between those who are maturing and those that are contemplating maturing those that are young those that, that have bad hips and bad ankles and, and and bad joint circulation you've even found a creative way to move yourself so thank god for you for those that have gone and bought bicycles and thank god for what you have done and for those who have discovered that, guess what? Those brand new Asics running shoes, they really feel good when you go running. So thank God for all that you are doing for the new marathoners and the half marathoners, the ultra marathoners, and you with your crazy self. Thank you for all that you've been doing and how you've been doing what you're doing. Just so excited for how God's using you to move. Now, now as you're moving, as always, I encourage you to make your way, to move your way over to YouTube. Because over in YouTube, that there was a message that I preached on yesterday at the, at the Great Friendship Church. And I preached and I was talking about in this series that I am in, I was talking about don't let your fire go out. Don't let your fire go out based out of Revelation 2, 1 through 7. It was a message that, that was talked about to those of you who were seriously engaged in serving the Lord. For those who labor for the Lord, that, that love the Lord. For those of you who are engaged and you're doing ministry for the Lord. And yet what it dealt with is not so much what you do with your hands, but what's in your heart. It was the issue of dealing with the idea that that church in Ephesus had left their first love. The first love didn't leave them. They left the first love. And the whole thesis of the message dealt with the idea that we can be so involved in things of God. So involved in singing and so involved in serving, so so involved in even praying and and, uh, and you list the list. It's so involved in so many things that what gets kicked to the curb is the Lord Himself. That we can be so involved in laboring for the Lord that we lose our love for the Lord. And I was talking about the whole issue of prioritization and how so many times it's not that we deny the Lord, it's that we just what we just don't have time for the Lord. We have now found ourselves so engaged and so involved in so many other things that the Lord just kind of gets benched. He gets put on the back burner, if you will. Even many of you watching me right now, if you're honest about it, you're a very important person. You're a busy person. You're important to your family. You're important to your job. You're, you're, you're important to your ministry. You're, you're important to your siblings. You're a very important person. And because you are so important, you don't really have time to invest in Christ himself, not the things of Christ, not the work of the church, but in Christ himself. And so many times our schedules, our schedules are so tight that we never consider that unless we literally sit with the Lord, we won't have the power to stand for the Lord. And so I want to encourage you today, my brother, my sister, I want to encourage your heart today that you would make time, move away. From, from the activities and move away from the prioritization, move away from the externality of your Christianity and learn to sit, learn to, to soak, 
Learn to be able to just listen. Learn to be able to allow the Lord to be your first love. Now, if I ask you what's your first love, you tell me it's the Lord. Oh, I love the Lord with all my heart. He heard my cry. I understand. But but if, if someone was to gauge your behavior, your activity, what's at the top of the food chain of your life, what would they say? As a matter of fact, here's a very interesting concept. If you were to take your family or your siblings, whoever live with you, and just get a blank sheet of paper and, and allow them to answer one question for you, which the question is simply this. Based on what I do, what would you say is the most important thing in my life? How would they answer that for you? Oh, it's starting to rain out here. I'm out here. I'm moving and it's raining. I have no umbrella. I have no cap. I have no covering. And hey, we're still looking for alligators too. But listen, if you were to be able to answer, answer that question, what would they say? Look at you, how you live your life. How you use your energy, how you use your time, how you use your resources. What would they say is the most important thing in your life? Is it your career? Is it you? Is it your children? Is it that fine automobile? Could it be that the blessing, the blessing, the blessing that God has given to you have superseded the blessor? That's what I'm trying to say today. So what the Lord is simply saying to us, we got to really go down deep into our heart and ask ourselves the question, have we left our first love? This is not about how much you go to church, what service you go to. It's not about do you serve in the ministry. It's, it's, it's not about uh, how much you give to the ministry. It's not about any of that. Don't miss this. Those are purely external issues. I am talking about in the core of your being, at the core of your heart, as your fire for the Lord going out. And if it's going out, what put it out? Who put it out? When did it go out? An idea, is, is, is he still your top love? But here's the good news in the text that I preached on yesterday, is that the grace of God is still saying, come on back. Repent, come on back. I, we can start this thing over again. I still love you. I'm still for you. Just come on back. And today, that's the word you need to hear here on, on this live post. Oh, the Lord is calling you to come on back. He wants to be not simply a part of your life. He wants to be your life. He didn't want to be ancillary to your life. He wants an abiding presence in your life. And I'm talking to believers today because could it be that the Lord has saved your soul and made you whole? Yes, he did. And yet you just don't have time for him. Your schedule is too jam-packed for the Savior. Oh, how crazy is that? And yet that's a reality. We let the Savior slip because we got so many other things going on. So I want to encourage you today that as you are moving, as you're going, as you're making a name for yourself, as you're increasing your nest egg, as you're increasing your rainy day fund, as you're learning to travel around the globe, as you're, as you're enjoying your grandkids and your great grandkids, and, and then as you're learning to really enjoy the niceties and the, and the fine things within your home and the big flat screen TV and the, the great automobile, as you're enjoying all those great appliances that you have, I want to ask you this question. That today, will you let the Lord be the apex of your life? Will you let the Lord, will you be able to sit and be quiet and to meditate on him and let him once again refresh your soul from the inside out? Because if you keep just bending the bow of outside activity, it won't be strong enough to sustain you with the breakdown you're going to have on the inside. You must always take care of the inside if you're going to be able to maintain the outside. It's raining, y'all, and the rain is coming fast and it's coming hard. And I'm still looking for alligators. So if you see an alligator, holler. If I see an alligator, I'm going to run. Now, now I want to see you Wednesday night at Friendship, a place to begin again. We're going to dig deep. Because God desires us to be a people whose fire does not go out. My goodness, why didn't I bring my umbrella? Wow. Okay, okay. I'm going to stretch, but first I'm going to dry off. I'll see you Wednesday night at Friendship, a place to begin again. Have a good day, y'all.